Today, I'm gonna change the oil in the green van. That's the Ford E350. I haven't changed it since I bought it. It was just changed before I got it according to a sticker inside, but I don't know what kind of oil they used. And well, I mean, I've driven it for a while, so might as well. Also, these 5.4s, the ones with the non-variable valve timing are a little bit picky about the kind of oil that should be using them. So I'm using actually a Rotella 10W30 diesel oil in it and that should take care of any issues that you could potentially have. So I've got the thing sitting here running right now. What I normally like to do before I change the oil is put a quart of ATF in there and the detergents and things in here kind of help clean out the valve train and whatnot. I know this is kind of like, well, everyone has their own methods for doing things. This is just something I've always done. And I've noticed on a few engines that I've taken apart before that putting this stuff in before you change the oil tends to get a lot of the garbage out of the valve train. Now this engine having overhead cams and whatnot, um, it helps out a little bit more with that, kind of break down some of the crystallization and stuff that can happen with the oil, especially if you go on short drives. I don't go on short drives, but I don't know what's been done with this thing. So we're gonna be running this Rotella here. Uh, this is a dual rated stuff. It's for gasoline and diesel. They call for 5W20 on this thing, but that was actually something that Ford changed a while back with the engines that have variable valve timing. Now, they never put the three valve engines in the vans, which I'm very thankful for because those cam phasers had so many issues on these things. So, luckily we don't have to deal with that. And that's why they wanted 20 instead of 30. So we're gonna bump it up to 1030 and uh, we should be good to go. Yesterday I was over at a friend's place and uh, I thought maybe the heater core had been leaking on this thing because I was getting that sort of telltale fog out of the vents. But then I'd also been running the air conditioner and I didn't turn it off and let the air blow through. So I wound up checking the coolant, noticed it was pretty nasty. This thing's not supposed to have orange coolant in it. So I got some of the coolant and uh, the service flesh stuff and did that all last night. That was in the middle of the night though, at like midnight or something, so I didn't film it. But anyways, um, I'm gonna let this thing idle here for a few more minutes and then uh, we should be ready to pop the drain plug, screw in a new filter, which by the way, OEM Motorcraft, it's the way to go. Um, these things are actually pretty inexpensive. I think it was like $4. <laughs> but I always like to stick with the Motorcraft stuff specifically on Ford trucks. I've actually got a degree in automotive technology, which arguably doesn't do me a lot of good right now, but we did a lot of training and it wasn't just the typical, oh, you should buy our stuff because it's our brand and everything else sucks. We actually did oil analysis on these things. We've cut them apart in varying conditions and these are definitely what you want to use. I'm feeling a little bit zesty today, so rolling around on the ground shouldn't be too much of an issue. Side note, it's actually costing me more to change the oil myself than it would be if I took it to an oil change place. But, I know I'm gonna have the oil in there that I want. So I'm gonna try and find some cardboard to put down on the ground so I can slide around on that, and then we'll get this party started. Well, the van's been running for probably about 20 minutes or so. I just shut it off. I'm gonna let it cool for just a little bit, but something just got delivered. Um, <laughs> another random project. I wouldn't even call it a project as much as it is just like a, an IRL meme. Come on, why is everything taped shut? It's a little miniature die cast dumpster. Um, made out of metal. It would have been cool if it was maybe about this big, but this, this will still work. Um, we're gonna make this into a candle. Just as an ode to the dumpster fire that is the year 2020 so far, especially around here in Portland. Um, yeah, so, uh, Probably gonna screw around with this a little bit later today, but isn't it cute? It's just a little dumpster. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, oh, forgot I turned on the barbecue a little bit ago. I gotta cook up some meat that's about to expire and then van should be cooled down by then and yeah, scalding hot oil. All right, so here we are into the van and we are going to drain the oil on this thing. Luckily this van has a lift on it, so it's tall enough to get underneath without jacking it up. Get this bolt loose here. Okay, now what I usually like to do is get a magnet and then hold that up next to the drain plug. Because invariably when you get the thing off of there, 
it will go flying and get covered in oil. Alright, there we go. And huzzah! There we go. Minimal mess. And we can take a look at the seal on here and see if it needs replacing. Looks like we're still in pretty good shape. I know a lot of people like to re replace the gasket on the drain plug with uh, every oil change, but I think in this case, we're good to go. It's an O-ring style one and it still looks like it's in good shape. You may be wondering why I'm using a white towel for this or white shop rags. It's because when you wash them, you can use bleach and then you don't have to worry about the color going away. <laughs> okay, I think we've got enough clearance here to let that continue draining and have this under the filter at the same time. Let's see how tight this thing is. This always makes a mess, so I usually put a towel over my arm like this and uh, helps a little bit. Yeah, I kind of kind of figured I probably should have grabbed an oil filter wrench. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see here where it's dripping. You can see just a little bit of red. That's the transmission fluid we put in there. Let me try this one more time. Yep, yeah, need a wrench. Be right back. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't find my oil filter wrenches, so still sorting through everything that came in from storage, so we're going to use a ratchet strap. Not the most ideal thing in the world, but it'll get the job done. And unfortunately, this is going to make a mess out of the ratchet strap, but you got to do what you got to do. Oh boy. Uh, I think we got us one of those situations where the oil filter is not going to come off. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to screw around with this and then I'll be back. Okay. The oil filter is loose now. I found my oil filter wrench, but it didn't work. So, we had to resort to more drastic measures. All right, let's get this thing off of here. Oh, my elbow's stuck. Stupid Pittman arm. Oh, there we go. Oh. All right, come to Papa oil filter. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna let that drip for a little bit longer. Actually, let's have a look here. Yeah, this oil's definitely been in here for a while. It doesn't, wait. Okay, so it's not Pennzoil, but Pennzoil has definitely been in this engine. Um, so that's a thing. I'll, uh, I'll explain more about that later. Oh. Looks like my front brake discs... Looks like my uh, front brake discs could use some resurfacing. Oh. Actually, never mind. Those need replacing. We've got a pretty decent lip right there. Yeah, there we go. You can see... Uh, you can see this lip right there. Yeah, so we we'll want to get after that here pretty soon. Time for the oil filter. One rule of thumb. Always, always pre-fill your oil filter. Because the amount of time it takes for this to fill up can do some damage to your engine, especially on one of these ones that has overhead cams. Um, this one has a bypass valve, or it's got an anti-flowback valve. 
See that sort of pinky weird color down in there? So I may not be able to fill it from the outside, but we'll give it a try. This is a brand new jug of oil, so some people are gonna say you shouldn't pour this directly into the center because it goes into your engine without being filtered, but I'm pretty sure we're okay because if there was particulates in this, I wouldn't be putting it in the engine. So I'm gonna try and fill it around the edges here. It usually takes forever, but with that anti-flow bag valve, I don't think it's gonna let me do that, so we'll see. Nope, not happening. We'll just dump it in the middle. There we go. And I don't fill it all the way to the top just because the, uh, the oil filter housing is at a little bit of an angle. So if this is completely full, when you tilt it a little bit to screw it in there, um, it will uh, it'll spill everywhere. So yeah, we'll let this sit for a minute, soak up some of that oil, top it off again, then we'll jam it in here. Urgh. Okay. Looks like we're done draining. We've got our filter here, which is uh, nice and new. This is a uh, FL820S. Let's screw this bad boy on. Always hand tight. Never use a wrench putting them on. Which I'm pretty sure is why the old one didn't come off. Is because someone used a wrench. Oh, I forgot to write the date on it. Oh well, I usually like to write the date and the mileage on there. Just for whatever reason. I'm gonna get this pretty snug with both of my hands. There we go. I usually tighten it up all the way and then I back it off just the tiniest amount. And whether it's just uh, superstition or not, I feel like that sets the the fibers and the uh, rubber on the seal so it'll come back off easier. Probably pure hogwash, but it's something I do. And there we go. New oil filter. No new leaks. Oh, yeah, that light flares. Noxious. Got our drain plug back in. Got all the oil wiped off of that. And it's beautiful under here. No leaks anywhere. Oh, I do need to replace the belt at some point though it uh, it squeaks occasionally with high RPM shifting plus it's uh, looking a little bit old oh yeah, and here's oh got a tube that's interfering here it's my transmission cooler line I'll have to readjust that so these hoses aren't interfering but this is our coolant drain here used that last night when I flushed out the cooling system um, I'm going to grab some new zip ties and readjust this hose a little bit because rubber rubbing on rubber will definitely wear a hole in that and yeah it's already starting to wear a little bit we don't need any um, any uh, radiator hose leaks this filter got a little bit mangled a little bit mangled in the process of getting it off there I actually don't even see a brand on it what is this thing FVP. What if that's like a fleet brand or something? I'll have to look that up. Gross. Now this thing is supposed to hold 6.8 quarts. So, I'll dump in the rest of this gallon. Oop. Dump that right on the circuit breaker for the lift. <laughs> Good. Let's move our towel. There we go. Are you serious? At least I had the towel there. This reach is a little bit high for me. Motor control above my shoulders is a little tricky. <laughs> okay, slower.
Uh, so, well, I do, I do still have really good function levels. Anything above shoulder height is extremely difficult. So it is kind of frustrating to have gone to school and done all the ASC certification tests and everything. And while I have the knowledge, um, being able to actually use it myself gets frustrating sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, and then of course there's the whole thing about spilling $10 worth of oil. There is an oil change place I normally use, but they don't have this oil available. I had to drive out to a Walmart way in the middle of nowhere in farm country to find it. Them and some farm supply, supply stores are the only place that carries the dual rated Rotella T10W30 uh, rated for diesel and gasoline engines and O2 sensor safe and all that stuff. But I still gotta get, well, oh, I guess I do have chairs with seat lifts on them. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll grab the C300. I forgot that thing has a seat lift. Um, anyways, I'm gonna fire it up, check the oil, and then top it off as necessary. I think there's about a gallon and a quarter in there right now, so like five quarts or something, but I don't know. I, I spilt a whole bunch of it everywhere. Okay, now I can actually reach things. What a bonus. Where the heck is the dipstick? Oh, I think it's over there. There. Come out of there, you. Why well, is this hard to reach even with a seat lift? Now the other thing that works against me here a little bit is this van also has a body lift, which means the engine is further down in here than it would be normally. And it's roughly this much further down. Actually, not quite that much. This van has a four inch, maybe it's a five inch body lift on it. But they had to lower down, like that's the mount for the oil fill. Uh, they had to adjust the radiator mounts and a bunch of other stuff in here. So the dipstick is way down in there. But I think everything's clear. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And then we can uh, check our oil. All right, we'll let this sit for a minute and drain down and then we'll see what our oil level is. So that dipstick mount seems a little bit loose. I might have to check the bolts on that. Yeah, it looks like we need about two more quarts. Should be a little bit easier now that the, uh, they got the seat lift. Oh yeah, this is great. And actually while we're here, just noticed we need to uh, top up our coolant a little bit. While these engines don't have a special coolant fill procedure, um, after refilling it and driving it around, uh, usually the rest of the air will work out of the system and you'll have to top it off a little bit. By the way, you notice I just put water in there. The cooling system holds four gallons and there's already two gallons of concentrate in there. So, we're good to go. I just top it off with water. And there we go. All topped up, leak checked, good to go. Coolant's been topped off, everything's cleaned up. I'm gonna dump the oil into the other containers probably tomorrow or something because my arms are a bit jello right now. But yeah, there you go. I changed my own oil. But at what cost? That's my kind of meat pager. Well, it's the next day now.
Um, so as with everything that you do or I do or rolling around on the ground, definitely comes with its consequences. I, uh, I've got a whole bunch of bruises on the back, back of my shoulders and stuff here. And today my muscles are not exactly happy. But if nothing else, it's a little bit of exercise. And I am able to get up off the ground into my chair just fine, you know, without help or whatever. So anyways, it's nice to actually be able to get some work done, do some maintenance on your vehicles and stuff. Like I said before, it's kind of frustrating not being able to do as much. I mean, I can still do quite a bit, but yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. But anyways, a few interesting things coming up soon. I'm going to be getting some demo chairs. I'm going to be getting one from Invacare. I, I know. I just want to check it out. It's got the new Lynx controls with the touchscreen and everything on it. It's their front wheel drive uh, that Av Avita, Avita, some brand, uh, some model. I, don't, I forget exactly what the name is. But I'm going to be getting that thing in maybe about a week or so. And then I'm also working on getting some other demo chairs from a couple of other manufacturers as well that kind of has some new exciting stuff. Things are rocketing forward here at a pretty good pace. And it's sounding like a number of manufacturers are interested in me reviewing or checking out their products or whatnot. We're still working out details with some of the vendors and whatnot. But I don't like talking about it all the time. I am pretty sure after using this Quantum now for a few days that we're going to keep having the same issues over and over again. So regardless, I'm going to look at some other chairs and I am curious about a few of these anyways that I haven't seen them even if the Quantum does miraculously become perfect and I wind up keeping it for another five years. But anyways, I think that's all for today. I'll catch you guys in a few days.